talking about butterfly gardens. Yes. I really do. It's my favorite thing. And people ask us about this all the time. Right. How do we attract butterflies to our garden? Yes, of course. So we've narrowed it down to five basic things. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about two of those today. We're going to talk about host plants and nectar plants. Yeah. Without these two, you will not have butterflies in your garden. Right. Remember when I was first learning all of this and we would go do a, a talk for people right. and the number one question always centered around the host plant. Mm -hmm. So there's um, a lot of confusion about it, there is. but that's perfectly understandable. Hopefully by the end of this session, you'll have a really good grasp of exactly what a host plant is. Farron came up with this great image that you can keep in your mind that helps you distinguish between the two. Do you remember? An analogy that we used is that the nectar plant is like a restaurant. All the butterflies can go and, and partake. But the host plant is for the caterpillars. And it's like a little nursery. So your host plants are the nursery and your nectar plants are the restaurant. That's a great analogy. Yeah. I I bet they still don't know what a host plant is. Though. Right, so a host plant is the only <laughs> plant that the caterpillar can eat. We need to think in terms of feeding the life cycle of the butterfly. Mm -hmm. We're feeding them when they're babies. Right. And so the baby nursery is are the host plants. Yeah. And then we're feeding them as adults. And so the nectar plants are the flowers on various plants that butterflies can yeah. sip nectar from. Okay, so I want to show you something I did as a kid. Yeah. Did you ever sip nectar yes. from a honeysuckle? Yes. So this is a honeysuckle growing in my courtyard. And, ooh, I see why, I see why butterflies, hummingbirds. Yeah. Well, all, all pollinators are constantly flying around uh, sipping sweet nectar. That's right, and, and Farron brings up a really good point. You know, we're, we may be planting a butterfly garden to attract butterflies, but the beauty is you're really reestablishing an ecosystem that has been lost so often in our landscapes. Yeah. You know, whatever we do for the butterflies, you do for all pollinators, for hummingbirds and bees. And yeah. So it's a win-win it's a situation. I'll take the camera in just a second and show you a lot of pollinators on a particular plant here in the courtyard. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about some other nectar plants. Okay. This is the bloom of a parsley. And it so happens that the leaves of the parsley plant are the host plant for the black swallowtail caterpillar. And so that black swallowtail caterpillar might be, sometimes they're called parsley worms. You might've seen them in your garden. <laughs> I have a certain part of my garden where all the parsley is reserved for the parsley worms. I do too. I'm okay with that. That's right. Um, but it so happens that the bloom is also a nectar plant for all butterflies, not just the eastern black swallowtail. It's hard to see from there, but all of these are little flowers and they all have nectar in them. So very attractive to all of our pollinators. Of course, I pick it up and I'm looking for the caterpillar. I'm right. looking to see if the black swallowtail butterfly has laid eggs on it. I don't see any on this particular. So bloom. that, so the parsley plant is a good example of a plant that is both nectar and host. That's right. Host for one particular butterfly, but nectar for lots of butterflies. Yes, and we'll show you that in, in just a bit. All right. So this is the parsley. I don't know if you can see all of the activity. We have so many insects flying around nectaring on this plant. Let me see if I can film it in a way that the sunlight catches their movement. What else have you got? Okay. Here is an example of a native nectar plant. This is the native columbine for our area. The bloom is, we'll slip in some, drop in some pictures to yeah. show you better pictures of the bloom, but you get an idea of the wispiness and the habit of this mm -hmm. particular plant. And one more, just example of a nectar plant, Pentis. Yes. We're going to talk about Pentis. 
Well, one of the things that butterflies of a smaller size love are the smaller florets on a flower. It's somehow easier for them to manage to sip the nectar from the flower. And the pentas is a favorite among a lot of butterflies. And so this would be considered one of the restaurant right. options. So it's a good example of a nectar plant that may not necessarily be a host plant for a caterpillar. All butterflies love this. This is a spectacular specimen of a giant coneflower. Look at that bloom. It is such a great nectar plant for butterflies, has special value to our native bees. Look at these magnificent leaves. They're huge and they're a blue-green, unlike anything else in your butterfly garden. Here is a beautiful stand of Coreopsis, great nectar plant for butterflies, all pollinators. Here's a plant we have so much fun with in the garden. It requires a trellis or some kind of a support, but it's the passion vine. And it's a host plant and a nectar plant. Host plant for the Gulf Fritillary Caterpillar. And look at this spectacular bloom. It's a great nectar plant for butterflies and many uh, pollinators as well. Such a great plant. It's a native plant to our area and you'll notice See the, the hole in the leaf where the, the caterpillars have already been enjoying the leaves. Look at that bee. He is enjoying that salvia so much. Such a great nectar plant for all pollinators. Here is a beautiful specimen of guara, which is native to our region. This is a great nectar plant. They're so small, Suzanne, but you can see insects flying around. Yeah. Enjoying the nectar. Yeah. Yeah, there's one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Look, Farron, here's a Stokesia, a Stokes Aster. This is one of my favorite plants because it is a native evergreen nectar plant for butterflies and lots of pollinators. It's so satisfying to use in your garden because it stays green all year round. I just love this plant. This beautiful lantana is a favorite nectar plant for pollinators. This plant ends up looking like a tree. This one's about 20 feet tall, but it's evergreen and it makes a great foundation plant for any butterfly garden or pollinator habitat. That's the beauty of having a butterfly garden. You're you're really reestablishing an ecosystem that feeds many of our beautiful creatures that we need, not just butterflies, yeah. but bees and bats and mm -hmm. hummingbirds and yeah. and many others, wasps and things that mm -hmm. frighten people, but I've never been stung by a bee in my garden no. or a wasp. Now I have, to, I, well, have I have, I was once. digging once. And we had to take me to urgent care. Oh. Remember? Yeah. So yeah. we do need to be careful of the wasps <laughs> I survived. or bees. <laughs> Guys, all joking aside, <laughs> as a recap, the host plant is food for the caterpillar, 
and the nectar plant is food for the butterfly. Yeah. So it feels like we focused more on nectar plants this week than on host plants. Right. Y'all join us next week. We are going to talk specifically about <laughs> butterflies and their host plants in much more detail. See you then. Bye.